I got a message late or uh, about mid afternoon from the uh, sovereign builders people, basically wanting to postpone the discussion tonight and continue the hearing until June so that they have time to address the issues in Mark Stinson's letter. Um, so, I mean, it's an open meeting, so we're free to discuss it. We probably shouldn't deliberate, but if anybody has any questions about the issues that Mark raised, you know, feel free. I have a question. Yep. It's not about issues that Mark raised, but um, it, it seems so wrong to me that they should be able to kill those three or four trees for a storage facility. Aren't there any laws protecting trees? Well, towns can pass bylaws to protect trees. Waitley just hasn't. So in other towns, I don't know how much latitude there is to protect trees that are well away from the road, but you can certainly protect big trees along the road. Maybe big trees anywhere where they occur. I'm not sure. Well, they have value just as trees wherever they are. Yeah. I'm just saying it in terms of what authority municipalities can wield. Is my, I don't know if, I mean, street trees, you can say there's a public amenity issue. When you're talking about deeper into the forest, it may, there may be case law that indicates you can't go that far, but I'm not really knowledgeable about those kinds of bylaws anyway. Okay. I heard that Northampton has a law, <clears throat> something about if you want to remove a tree in your property, you have to plant another one or something, hmm. something like that. I, it must be the planning department or, or planning commission. Hmm. Is that just along roads or anywhere? I think it's anywhere. I mean, I could imagine why you would want to do that along a road, but if you cut a tree in the forest in New England, it's, you're going to get multiple trees sure. coming up in its place. So. Sure. Yeah, it, it, you may be right. It may just be on the road. It, it is a real shame, especially with that, that massive beech tree with, without, without canker. Yeah. And that hemlock, uh, that hemlock has to be at least as old as the beech, probably older. Yeah. I know it's a massive hemlock. Yes. It's very impressive. Yeah. yeah, well, I've been emailing with Tom Litwin and uh, um, Judy Marklin. The planning board wants to know what can be done about those big trees and about the driveway along the border. And I think that they might attend the meeting next month when this public hearing happens. I brought up with them what's the possibility of reducing the width of the road. It sounds it sounded to me from what Judy said that there is an option for doing that, that there could be like a variance or something that would allow them to make the road smaller. And, you know, if, if it were narrower down to 16 or 18 feet, they may have more flexibility about going around that hemlock or getting farther from the beach, in addition to maybe protecting one or both of those pine trees at the entrance. The planning board, I was saying, with the, was the planning board okay with us shifting the driveway to more towards the south instead of the north where they wanted? Was that a compromise? Or? Well, we're not shifting it. It's just it is where they proposed it to be. Uh, they, they would like to shift it. Mm -hmm. And what I said was, you know, it's really up to the applicant. We can't force that because it's not environmentally better mm -hmm. uh, to go. But if they have to move that infiltration basin, they might have a little more flexibility about where the road goes. Uh, so I don't know what it's gonna look like after they address that. Now they responded to Mark Stinson's comments. So I was suggesting that the infiltration basin can't go anywhere else. So I'll be interested to see how they make that case when they come before us. So have, has there been a response already to, to Mark's letter? They're, they're emailing Mark and CCing us on it. Okay. So um, I haven't responded to anything other than the acknowledgement of their request to, to continue the hearing. 
Um, you know, but there's no reason I can't forward them all to you so you can see what they say. I've, so I've spent time reading all, all the all the documents and looking at the plans, and, and I had a few questions. Okay. Um, one I had one set I had emailed to Scott earlier today. I was just on another Zoom meeting, so I don't know if you had time to look at that, Scott. Yeah, I sent you a response. So okay. Uh, yeah, I was, I was curious about the impact of the wider box culvert at five feet on the wetlands upstream and on the uh, downstream neighbors who I think just replaced their culvert, didn't they? Yeah. Well, no, they fixed it. They didn't replace it. They put uh, a metal plate on the top of it. But I don't recall. Was that also a 36 inch culvert down there? Yeah, could well be. It wasn't very big. Yeah. Um, and are, are those points that we should be yeah should be and can be concerned with yeah absolutely uh that's something that we need to consider and in their filing they made some there was a comment in there somewhere about having evaluated downstream flooding issues and that they were not going to be a problem um so we can ask them that, to explain that to us when when they come before us. But what I've heard from other people who do culvert replacement uh, design and permitting and from USGS people that have studied this is that you really have to be in a pretty urban area before you start to see where you got like multiple crossings holding water back before it's holding enough water back that it's likely to create a problem when you increase the size. So I'm not an expert. That's not my opinion. That's mm. just things that I have heard that yeah, yeah. it's rarely an issue when people have actually gone ahead and done the calculations to see what the what the impacts would be. Okay. The uh, looks like stormwater management is, is going to be so critical for that project because they're they're really covering most of the upland with impervious surface. Either roof yep. or, or driveway parking. Yeah, uh, and I didn't see a lot in the plans that uh, really looked at that kind of um, both both during construction, as Mark I think raised, and uh, ongoing. And and I, I was thinking that in the past we have, uh, for for example, with the driveway on North Street, um, the uh, I forget the name of the people, the Judge Judy property. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hill. yeah, we we did talk to them about an inspection and management plan, right, for the stormwater management, and that that may be something we want to raise with this. Yeah, there should be a management plan for stormwater, and the reason why the inspection for the the Wadhams was that they, it was all going to be underground and and impossible for anyone to see. So when you're dealing with an above ground sedimentation basin, you can see when it's filling up and needs to be cleaned. And in their case, you know, somebody would have to go in there with a special camera and look around to see when it needs maintenance. But there should always be a maintenance that says, you know, once it fills up to a certain level, it will be cleaned out. Um, yeah, maybe I just missed that in there, but, uh, and it looked like a lot of what's coming into the, uh, into those basins is, is um, being piped. Yeah, um, I think that was part of what Mark was talking about is he wanted to see, you know, the discussion of the maintenance in addition to the construction, sedimentation and erosion control plan. Okay. Um, the, the benefit, the one positive thing about their setup is, is that they can capture roof runoff and pipe it to the basin and that really is going to be very clean water. So when water comes off of a road or off of the, the ground and drains, that's what's bringing in a lot of sediment and then requires cleaning out of that basin or the catch basins down the road. Right, and they have drains in, in the uh, driveways and in the paved areas around the buildings? I, I, I don't know exactly how that structure, because I was assuming they're gonna have to move the infiltration basin, I didn't do a very careful analysis of the stormwater plans because I figured they're all gonna change. Uh, okay. Uh, 
So there is a whole nother volume. I don't know if it, if, if it came through electronically, but there's a whole big volume of stormwater calculations and, and other things. That's, that's in the print stuff you handed me yesterday or at Monday. So. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think I only got one copy of it though. Uh, there was some of that, but there's this whole additional nope. document. Yep. I think that we only got one copy that said stormwater drainage report. Okay. But it may be one of the electronic ones that I sent it, that, that they put a link to when they mm -hmm. they sent it out. I haven't I haven't checked to see. Okay. I, I had just two yeah, other things. Stormwater in. report. There's okay. it, you have an electronic version. So okay. if you're suffering from insomnia, you know where to go. I may I may have seen enough enough of those calculations to to blur my eyes. <laughs> um, I noticed that one the building in the back is uh, part of that building is within the 50 foot buffer. Yeah. And so that's something we can talk about. I mean, the in other cases, we have said, well, if you go, if you encroach a little here, you've got to give a little there. So okay. that's not a game stopper for us, but no, it's certainly no, something no. to consider. It's a it's a, a negotiating point, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I also saw last thing that, that the uh, utilities are to be underground. Yeah. Okay. Coming in, coming in from State Road, including a gas line, a water line, and electricity. Hmm. In their in their detail in the plans, it uh, stipulates that the water line has to have a minimum of five feet over cover. Mm. And how, how do they do that going across the culvert? Uh, well, they may go uh, through the wetland, I guess. I don't know. Um, there, there was nothing nothing to indicate how they were right. going to do that. So we have to ask them that. You know, yeah. how are you bringing in your utilities? Yeah. To catch. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. What did you say, Andy? That's a good catch on that. I would have, yeah. would have caught that. So. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Mark made the comments on the letter. They immediately got a response from one of the people from the consulting company asking for clarification. Can you explain? Mark said, I sent you everything I'm going to send you. It's now up to the Conservation Commission. And then another consultant wrote back with another letter, sort of making his case and explaining it and saying, you know, is this, a, is this okay with you? I don't think Mark has any interest in getting into a prolonged discussion with them. I think he's going to leave it to us. So mm -hmm. um, I did just forward to you the last exchange. Um, so you can, hopefully it's got the whole email string so that you can catch up with all the stuff that I read through today. Okay. Um, so I guess we have to vote to continue the public hearing. I guess first I, I have to open the public hearing. And now uh, all in favor of continuing it till seven o'clock on June 16th, say aye. 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 Um, it looks like the uh, solar farm is not ready to come in for their certificate of compliance. So we'll put off that for another month. Um, I don't see Stephen Herbert yet, so we can't go there yet. Um, so I have two other things, one on the agenda and one not. Um, Keith Bardwell <clears throat> wants to wrap up the work on Williamsburg Road and, and basically release Davenport from their contract, you know, as being, having satisfied the contract. So he would like to schedule a meeting for the Conservation Commission to view uh, the, the, the work there to make sure that it is, the area is stable enough to, for the town to sign off on it. Uh, so the, it would like, Keith would like to do that the first week in June um, and the uh, representative from Davenport responded right away and said, how about three o'clock on the second? And I wrote, I said, well, I said, the commission members all have daytime jobs. Uh, we usually do our site visits in the early evening or on the weekend. 
And he wrote back, no, he said 10 o'clock. He proposed like 10 o'clock. Then I responded and, and, and he said, well, we're generally not available at six o'clock in the evening or on the weekend. So how about three o'clock? So I haven't responded yet, but Keith responded and said, if you can't make it, we'll let you know what's decided. So uh, my question to you is when would you like to do a site visit um, or would you like it to be delegated to, to one or more commission members to do that on behalf of the full commission? Like, you know, who would like to go? Who, when would you like to do it? Um, I can say right now that I'm going to be away the first week in June. So I can't be there. Okay. Which progress, project is this again, Scott? Is that the one, the bridges that they were Yeah, doing? the, the oh. two bridge replacements. Okay. I could probably make a three o'clock. I can take some time. If they needed to, I could probably get up there for three. Okay. Uh, George and yeah, either of you no. want to be a what? A what day was it? What? What's the date? We can pick the date. Oh. We can tell them when we're available, and we don't have to go at three o'clock. We could do it later if that's more convenient for people. Later would be more convenient for me personally. But and, and me, I I can't do the first or second. Okay. Uh, how about the third? It's a Thursday. Yeah, I could do the third uh, early early evening. It's okay. That'd yep. be about six o'clock, five sure. thirty, six thirty. Which six o'clock fine for me. Yeah, that works. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll I'll I'll counter propose and let Davenport know exactly how we feel about them in the process. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with people having constraints, but when somebody just says, absolutely, six o'clock is out, weekends are out, I don't care if you're a volunteer board and you have jobs, my life is more important than yours. So right. that, that rubs me the wrong way a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we could vote on the minutes. Anybody read the minutes? <laughs> Anybody find mistakes in the minutes? Yeah. Very good. All right. All in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. So the last thing I, that I have on the agenda, other than other business that you might have, um, is, you know, I sent out that um, MVP worksheet for the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Plan for prioritization. And then after I sent it out and it already started getting back from you, I heard that it was okay if, if we didn't get back to them until after our meeting. But then I thought it was interesting to just sort of get your feedback and then we can look at all the different votes. And, and then as a group, maybe I thought we could agree on whether to give it a high, medium and low for each one where there wasn't sort of a slam dunk vote for it. So I was going to suggest that we just take a few minutes and go through each of the items and just see if we can agree on a consensus prioritization for each one. I would appreciate that. And I felt um, at the meeting where we talked about that, where, you know, the big meeting, and also when I was filling out that survey that I just wasn't qualified to answer any of those questions. I feel like all of those questions require an expert opinion. And I'm not an expert in any of those things. So I, I felt like a complete fraud sending that in. <laughs> but you know what? Our, our votes were reasonably consistent. So, uh, you know, I think the, the wisdom of the masses is that, you know, going to give us something that, that gives us a reasonable thing that as a group I can put forward to the FERCOG. But nobody else in town is really expert enough to figure those things out, all of those things at least, maybe some, but not all. But don't feel too badly. <laughs> I've been faking it for years. <laughs> well, you do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Okay, I'm going to share my screen and hopefully you'll be able to read it. Um, yep. 
Right. So um, we only had to do the ones that had the V. We didn't have to do the ones that had an S in this column. So uh, the first one is uh, related to culverts. Hire a consultant to complete an assessment of all culverts and drainage systems in town. Um, and basically, we got four highs and one medium. So how do you feel about us just going for high on this one? Good. Good. That's fine. Yeah. I'm sure I won't remember how I voted the first time. I was going to say, I can't tell you who's who on this. So I can't <laughs> tell you. Uh, second one is bridges. Town's major bridges still has weight restrictions and need to be replaced. Here we had two highs and three mediums. So I think there may be room for discussion here if anybody wants to argue for either high or medium. What What is the town's major bridge? I think the one over going up towards Haydenville Road, right? Up towards Haydenville or up Haydenville? Up Haydenville, I should say, yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's not one on 91? That's dry bridge yeah it's, it's a, i guess a bridge no but those are those are those are state, state yeah state yeah, uh, one on christian lane over the mill river that's true yeah the one yeah. they replaced not too long you know 15 plus years ago maybe and there would be one on swamp road and then there's mill river up along near white birch yeah, turning on Swamp Road. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was that was my big question about what, Road. what, it, what is the major yeah. bridge? And there's actually two on Christian Lane, because there's one over the highway and then one over the water. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I assume that a weight restriction is because it's structurally compromised in some way. So I gave it a high because if we've got any bridges that are structurally compromised, then that probably should be a, a high priority for getting it fixed. But I don't know any detail about it. So I would be fine with going with, with medium or moderate. But if it if it has weight restrictions, then that is, there's signage about that. They, they, all <laughs> they all have weight restrictions. What is that? They all have weight restrictions. Right. So nobody's going <laughs> to go over it if they're bigger than that size. So it seems like we don't have to worry about it. Right, but if the weight restriction has to do with the way the bridge was originally built, that's one thing. But if it's a weight restriction on a particular bridge because it's compromised and it can't carry the weight that it used to be able to carry, I might worry that you know, maybe that might not last them very much longer. But right. So I just thought there wasn't enough information here to, to determine a priority. Okay. Well, the majority of people said medium, so I'll go with medium unless somebody wants to argue differently. Works for me. That's fine. Um, I was one of the H's, so I'm, I'm conceding. <laughs> uh, industrial park, we're talking about a low impact development. We have three mediums and two lows. Um, I was really not that impressed with the idea of LID because that site is pretty sandy already. It seems like all the storm water is going into the ground. Uh, but it talked about what did LID solar stand projects. For? Huh? What did LID stand for? I wasn't certain. Low impact development. Oh. So it's things like infiltrating your storm water rather than having it run off. Oh, OK. Um, you know, planting trees in order to reduce mm -hmm. energy use. So anyway, it just said solar PV projects form partnerships with businesses. And, you know, I'm all in favor of rooftop solar rather than agricultural solar. But I'm not saying it's a huge priority. It was the only thing about this one that appealed to me at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the one where the Route five and one sixteen. It says right. That's the the one with the impervious the the pervious paper. I should say right. That's the next item down. That's yeah. This one is okay, uh, right. Oh, I'm, well, it says it said route one sixteen. I was that's why I was confused. Confused. Yeah, the industrial yeah. park on one sixteen. We don't have one on one sixteen. That's why I was confused. I was like, isn't it? Isn't that on one sixteen? Um, like across from the the preschool. That's Deerfields, I think. 
Oh. I always thought that was Whateley's industrial. No, I, I think it's Whateley's. I thought there was always this big controversy that Waitley wanted to run a road from its industrial park to 116, so it was easier for people to right. get to, and Deerfield kept blocking it. Right. And that's Deerfield, right next to 116 there, with that, those, those industrial park buildings. Waitley's okay. industrial park abuts it, but is not, does not front on 116. It's from oh, Sandy okay. Lane, right? Mm. Right. Yeah. Right. It's because the Deerfield line goes further up, goes across uh, River Road, um, just just above um, Chang Farms and then the next farm up. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we have three mediums and one low. I'm one of the mediums and I'm wavering. So what do you want to do? You want to go with medium or low on this? Low works for me. But... I said low. Lowe's okay. All right. Sure. As long as it's not Lowe's. Right. Um, the park and ride. Medium. Yeah. So that looks easy. We don't need to spend a lot of time talking about that. All right. Water resiliency. Chestnut Plain Road. Town wells are close together. Pulp of same aquifer. We have no redundancy. Um, it seems like if it was a, at all possible, it'd be nice to have a backup in case our water system failed for some reason. But I think they've tried before and I don't think they've found any opportunities for doing that. So the prospects may be low, although the priority in my mind would be high. So anyway, we got four H's and one M. Should we go high on this? Yeah, sure. Yeah. sure. Okay. Uh, municipal buildings, rainwater harvesting systems. We got three lows, one medium, one high. I might have been the high on that. And if I was, um, I think it was because it seemed like such a simple thing to do. Yeah. But the I mean, I, I guess the question is, is this is this for a stormwater management so that it doesn't run off or is this a water conservation feature so people will water their gardens with their rain barrels? I thought it was the second. Yeah. Great. Rainwater harvesting. I mean, I think it's a good idea. I'm not sure that it's urgent. <laughs> um, or, yeah, I wouldn't, or, or, I wouldn't say urgent. Or a high, a high priority relative to anything else on the list, but... All right, what say you folks? I, I think there's also value in doing something like that. That is that like people notice it and think, oh, this is nice that Waitley's doing for me. I think it's like a community building thing. Sort of like compost bins, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, if we average them out, we're somewhere in the M range, I think, but we're sort of straddling M and L's. Well, the medium, like I said, it's simple enough. And George? No, medium's fine. Yeah. I, I'm okay with medium. I think that's where it's going to end up eventually anyway. Yeah. This is high stake stuff, you know. <laughs> long as something gets done with the rainwater and it doesn't breed mosquitoes. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's part of our uh, mosquito management plan. Right. <laughs> Get rid of the water in those rain barrels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to use hubcaps instead of barrels, right? <laughs> Spare tires. Spare tires. You, yeah. you can put fish in them and that takes care yeah. of the mosquito larvae. Yeah, as long as they don't get in the wetlands. Um, so then the second one really has to do with, uh, the next one has to do with doing the same thing only with greenhouses. And so we've got four mediums and a high. Seems to me like there's a lot more water to be saved with greenhouse operations mm -hmm. than with residential. Yes. Mm -hmm. M? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, pump house. This one surprised me a little bit. Equips a water department pump houses with a backup generator. I was the only one that said that would be a high priority. So I'm sort of curious what you folks are thinking. 
like the, Wait the Waitley Water District has a backup generator for its pumping system. Why not the town water department? Mm. I think that's just one where I didn't know how important that was or not important. Hmm. I don't remember how I voted. You know, when we had the, um, when we had the October snowstorm, I think that's when we went a few days without electricity and, you know, basically that meant going without water, without running water for a few days, at least in the, where I live. I don't know whether that's how it would play out with the water department or not, but the, that seems like it's a public health issue. Mm. It, it didn't affect my water. Okay. Water. I'm you, on Christian Lane, so I'm on the yeah. newer system. All right, well, an average of all of these would put us at medium. You want to keep it there? Sure. Sure. I can be convinced that it's high if you want to. Um, I'm, I'm okay with high or medium. All right. Well, two highs, two mediums, and a low drags it into the medium category. So unless somebody else wants to change. Medium's fine with me. Okay. All right. Infrastructure for firefighting. Uh, no hydrants in West Waitley, promote construction of fire ponds, underground storage tanks, dry hydrants. Um, we have two mediums, two highs and a low. So that sort of brings us into the medium range. Anybody want to argue for something different? What are they considering West Waitley? Just up above, I'm trying to think, above like hills, like towards Poplar Hill or? People refer to everything west of the interstate as West Waitley. Oh, okay. I just didn't know. But, I mean, I don't know on this form. Yeah. Yeah, usually it's Weber Road, Conway Road, Haydenville Road. Yeah, okay. Well, it's where there aren't any hydrants. Yeah, where there's no hydrants right. in this case. Oh, okay. yeah. Or, I mean, there are hydrants coming down Weber Road off of the pipeline coming from the uh, upper reservoir. There are a few scattered in there. So if you have, I vote for medium. Medium's fine. Yeah. Yep. Medium. The power grid, above ground power lines vulnerable to natural hazards, burying all power lines in town, cost prohibitive measure, advocate FERCOG to get legislation about dealing with this problem. I figured, I don't, if, yeah. I don't know what the solution would be. You got to either have them above ground or below ground, right? Right, right. For all the money they just spent on just doing all this tree work, I don't see them trying to bury all these lines after they cleared all these trees and stuff to keep the power the lines they have now. And how, how much more damage and how many more issues would it raise for the Conservation Commission if they were putting all this stuff underground? Yeah, and I don't, I don't know whether... And I guess it's harder to maintain it when it's underground so that when you have a, an outage, you know, where do you look? How do you find it? Mm -hmm. So right now we've got three L's and two M's. So it leans L. Anybody want to argue mm -hmm. for something better? That sounds oh, it's good. It's fine. Uh, low impact development, zoning laws currently encourage LID. Uh, so the idea is to try to change town zoning to encourage LID town wide. Um, so we have two L's, two M's and an H. So, uh, we're probably in the M category, but, uh, we can move it up or down as people argue. I'd, I'd say at least an M because they we could they could incorporate that uh, tree preservation that we were talking about in, into low impact development. Oh, that'd be good. Okay. 
Anything in the bylaw, though, does it have to go to townwide vote? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it's like two thirds, right? For yeah, zoning maybe. changes. I, I guess I, I think of LID as primarily stuff for more urban areas where you're generating a lot of runoff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I don't know that we get a huge gain from having every household in Waitley doing LID. I mean, we're all pretty much doing country drainage. Well, and it comes down our driveways and into the into the catch basin. So I guess. All right. Anybody object to an M? No. No, a better bylaw could give us more control over uh, yeah. large commercial developments that take up all the all the upland in a property that's mostly wetlands. <laughs> yeah. So the next category is important to recognize. This has to do with shelters making sure that emergency shelters are secure and available and are not going to be cut off or otherwise unavailable in case of an emergency. So the first one of this has to do with hire a consultant to assess options for rainwater harvesting, implementing stormwater BMPs to reduce flooding risks at the school. As part of the assessment, determine if the roads leading to the shelter would benefit from stormwater BMPs to aid with access. It, it doesn't seem to me like the school is all that vulnerable to flooding. Yeah, and, and where I started to notice a trend in, in all this was there was an awful, awful lot of <laughs> items that uh, talked about hiring a consultant. And, and yeah. a, lot of, a lot of these yeah. things I don't think really require hiring a consultant. They're common sense with people in town who, who, who know the areas. Yeah, and the whole idea of water harvesting or rain barrels is like, if you've got a storm big enough to flood the school, I think it's gonna overflow your rain barrels, right? <laughs> your barrels gonna float away. <laughs> um, so, I did, so we got two L's and three M's. <clears throat> it sounds like we can go with low. I think so. Uh, low is good. Yep. Yeah. All right. Town library can use as a cooling station, but reliable backup power is needed. So create a generator uh, to have backup power for the library so that if we deal with a heat, you know, a, a stretch of a heat wave of several days in the high 90s or hundreds, do we want to make sure that the library is available? Well, it's not um, handicapped accessible, right? Not uh, yet. <laughs> so maybe it should be the town hall instead of the library. Yeah, or the school. Library is yeah. accessible with the ramp. Yeah. The downstairs of the library, though. Ah, okay. But they're working on trying to get a trying to make it accessible so and i agree it seems like the library is pretty small compared to the town hall the, yeah. the school yeah. uh the town offices <clears throat> um so at this point we have four m's and an h do you want to downgrade it to an l or just keep it an m i'm okay with downgrading to an l yeah, yeah. that's fine yeah. i'm with that all right. All right. Highway crews and farm workers. Uh, this has to do with heat waves and making sure there's a training program for supervisor, supervisors to ensure workers are getting enough breaks and water. So we have three H's and two M's. Would this be like a board of health thing where the board of health would require training? I don't think so. Sounds it, does, it does sound like it. I'm not a consultant. It also seems like a human rights thing. Uh, yeah. I think it would be the Department of Agriculture that would be providing that training, you know? Yeah, providing the training. I meant who would ensure, whose regulations would ensure that it had to be done? So it would be the Board of Health. Yeah. I don't know. My right. Board of Health member is out right now, so I can't ask him. <laughs> I just, uh, 
Wouldn't these fall under OSHA compliance? That too, probably. That too, yeah. yeah. I don't know who's responsible for that in town, Brian. Well, yeah, I don't know what the what the OSHA regs are for farm workers. You know, if they're out there hoeing in the heat, is there some regulation? I, I guess it's just one of those things where, even if you're just educating the farmers what the OSHA regulations are, uh, and making sure that they know people are paying attention, it's more likely they'll comply with them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, whoever does it, I think it's high. All right, so we have three highs, two mediums. Anybody opposed to making it a high? No. No. Sounds good. All right. Um, work with local farmers to determine if access to potable water is an issue and identify alternative sources of drinking water for farm workers if necessary. That seems like it's the same as the one above. Well, yeah, we're caught. I mean, same right. level. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that the subtle difference is that the town would work with farmers to make sure they had access to potable water. So it would be more than just train them about their needs, what they need to do, but also find out if they lack potable water, how to make sure they get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and looking at the left, it says highway crews and farm workers. So I read the first one is really town employees, town highway department, and the, the other is the farmers. But, but, yeah. Do we make them both high? Both high, yeah. Sure. sure. Everybody needs to drink water in hot weather. Yeah. So the next two have to do with isolated residents. Um, I was shocked to see that we're in the Harriman and Dam inundation zone. Is, is that the Vernon Dam? That, Which dam is that? That's, that's the one with Harriman, on the Deerfield River, up at Harriman Reservoir. Oh, all right. In Vermont? Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Not only Waitley, but West Waitley is in there. <laughs> I think they may have may have met the, the, or maybe that's the name of the dam up at the upper reservoir there, but I've never heard that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. Anyway, um, anyway, cell phone, I think cell phone is an issue, but I don't know that it's a climate change issue, but no. Um, okay, we have two L's, two M's and an H. Do you want to make it an M or an L? Yeah, I, I put an L and I live in West Whaley, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would defer to George on this one. <laughs> I looked up the Harriman Dam and the only one that I found was in Vermont. Right. Yeah. All right, L. We're, L. we're in deep. We're in deeper trouble than cell phone coverage if that if we're if we're yeah. in from there. <laughs> it's it's to that many dams through the. That's yeah. a big phone can't help you now. Big climate change. Yeah. Well, I think it's the West Waitley residents are worried that when East Waitley is underwater, they won't be able to get to <laughs> stop and shop or Walmart anymore. <laughs> right. Um. Seek funding to improve stormwater drainage on gravel roads to aid with evacuation efforts for priority locations. Uh, stormwater BMP concept designs based on Franklin County stormwater pilot project. So we have three M's, one H, one L. I said high on this just because I think this, the dirt roads in Waitley are contributing an awful lot of sediment into the streams. And that reduces the, <clears throat> the capacity of stream channels to, to hold water and transport water, <clears throat> and also would make those roads more prone to being washed out severely in a storm and, and cut off you know, routes of egress for people who might need to, you know, like in, in Vermont, they had whole towns that were isolated because all of the roads around them failed. Uh, it just seems like managing our stormwater so that the dirt roads don't wash out would be a way of trying to be a little more secure in case there are severe storms in our future. Can you do that without paving them? <clears throat> um, perhaps, but I think <clears throat> paving them and putting in drainage and catch basins is probably a more uh, effective way to do that. <clears throat> and Keith was telling me that on average, dirt roads lose about an inch of sediment a year. 
and that has to be replenished. So if you think about the entire length of Conway Road <clears throat> and an inch of sediment, that's all going into the Westbrook. Uh, Especially a steep road like that. Yeah. Yeah, plus, plus Williamsburg Road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, I, that's just why I said H, but the average on this is an M, so we could go with M if you're more comfortable with that. I'm fine with an H. That makes sense. Yeah, it actually helps with. You sold it, Scott. I sold it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we're still in isolated residence now. Send out a new survey to residents to update the list of residents who may need assistance during a hazard or emergency event. <clears throat> this was done a few years ago, but it should be redone. Mm -hmm. I think we should definitely do that. Yep. Okay, okay. we got three H's, they prevail. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Complete an assessment of vulnerable population needs for communication, evacuation, and sheltering during hazard events. Isn't that the same as the one above? Same, same, sounds the same to me. Yeah. So There's three highs, eight. so we could just go with the high. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Household emergency preparedness. Develop and implement new education outreach that covers household emergency preparedness. Program should encourage residents to sign up for Connect CTY, remote services that are already available from the town and include welcome packets for new residents that would provide sheltering options. We have three M's and then an H and an L that cancel out to an M. Yep. Stick with an M. Sure. sure. I yep. think I was probably the L because I hate the idea of getting a packet of junk when I move to a new town <laughs> and forcing that on other people. Um, I was the H because I figured people should be prepared and people are usually idiots about their vulnerability <laughs> to storms, but we There's average each other out there. Emergency communication between town and farmers. Partner with CISA to open a line of communication with local farmers, which could be especially useful after an event to document damage. All right, we have two H's, two M's and an L. So this could go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to argue their case? Um, I, I put a high because I figured that you know, after something like Superstorm Irene, where the farmers in some places just got hammered, you know, there was like a meter of sediment on some of the fields along the Deerfield River, that a little pre advanced preparation on how to evaluate and report the damage to try to get uh, relief from that sooner seemed to make sense to me. So whether they got washed out or whether they got dumped on or some other kind of a major you know event of some kind trying to get the farmers made whole and up and running again was what i was focused on hmm. well the involvement of cisa in that is pretty key so i'm okay with high sure was this written by someone from CISA? Because I noticed CISA is in a lot of these items. Yeah, maybe people just think that CISA is a good agricultural outfit that's sort of close to home. Uh, Margaret is from CISA. She works for CISA, but I don't know if they came from her. Right. It seems like um, if this was suggested by CISA as something that they could do, like there are a lot of CISA things in here. Yeah. And I thought it, it makes a difference like if they suggested these things, then they feel like they could do them and do a good job of them. But if we're just pulling CISA out of the air and saying, look, they should do this and they should do this, then it makes a difference. Yeah. Well, I mean, potentially they could work maybe with UMass Extension or somebody else to do the same thing if CISA didn't want to. But as an idea, it seems like a good idea. Mm -hmm. It sounded like George, Andy, and I are okay with the high. And Monty, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm okay with high. Historically significant sites. Native American sites throughout town, but left unmarked to limit vandalism. 
Some of these are in East Waitley, which are high risk of flood damage. Prepare an assessment to determine which sites are at the highest risk to flood damage and develop nature-based solutions that could be implemented to mitigate flood damage. We have three L's and two M's. Anybody want to advocate for an M? If no one knows about them, how important are they? It's true. Well, I was reading in the uh, open space plan, there's apparently a huge archaeological site that's partly in Waitley over near the Deerfield Industrial Park. Mm -hmm. And it was partially excavated and then they buried it in like 30 feet of, set of soil to prevent looting so that it would be available to be excavated at some point in the future. <laughs> the thing is, is that if the Connecticut River is going to flood that site, it's going to flood an awful lot more than that as well. And if it's an archeological site, it means it's pretty much been non-flooded and non-destroyed for a very long time. Uh, so it just seemed to me like it was uh, maybe not as necessary, but I, I mean, I, I would, I love, the idea of that site being there and any other sites that along the Connecticut River where there was historically gatherings and, and old middens and things like that. Well, three L's and two M's, so. I'm okay, I'm okay with uh, uh, L. Yep, so am I. I guess for me, it's, it's not that they're not important. The question is, are they really vulnerable? That was where I fell down. Mm -hmm. I think it's highly important, but unlikely to be vulnerable, but I could be wrong. No, I, I agree. And, and if, if they do become vulnerable, is, is there anything that really could be implemented at this point to mitigate, yeah. that, given how, how bad the flooding would have to be? Right, right. Okay, next, we're in the category of farms. Seek funding to create a municipal database to show how local farmers are adapting to climate change. The database could provide information about any grant funding received and opportunities for other funding to support adaptation efforts. Two L's, three M's. M sounds fine to me. Yep. I'll go with Ann on this one. Yeah. I think there's a lot of information out there for farmers already. It just depends on who else wants this information, you know. You know, we have access to a lot of different resources, but um, I'm okay with an M. Yeah, my, I was an L on this one. My feeling was it's a, it's a good thing to do, but it's not necessarily at a municipal level that it should be implemented. Right. <clears throat> Good point. Yeah. An M? Yes. Sure. All right. We're getting near the end here. Oh, we got a long stretch ahead of us though. Oh man, <laughs> we gotta answer quicker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, riparian buffers. We could, we could only discuss the ones that have all three um, levels. Yeah, this one is all H's, so it's this all is good. H's. Yeah, it's pretty simple that one, yeah. There we go. Uh, deer ticks. We got three L's, an M, and an H. Uh, that's, that's about the Mosquito Control District. Oh, yeah. Which we heard all about at last month's meeting. But we've already dealt with, we'll have already dealt with that by the time this plan gets published, right? Yeah, we've already done it, so just make it a high. Thank you. Then it'll be a victory for us. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Well, I, was gonna say we've, here. I was just going to say we've already done it, so put an L. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Let's go with an L. Uh, Cross-jurisdictional sharing program for local boards to share nursing staff, reduce cost quality for funding, expand capacity to meet current and future needs. We don't have nursing staff, right? Except for at the school? Yeah, that's true. And even that one is shared. 
So we got three M's, two H's. I got put an M because uh, they already isn't they already do sharing through through across towns, right? Right, Molly? Yes, the nurse, the school nurse um, works in different schools as well. Yeah, but are they doing vector-borne diseases? That's the key thing. My guess is they are. Uh, isn't there, well, FERCOG has a nurse on the Board of Health, right? Uh, I don't know, could be. I think so. So we're already sharing that one too. So M? Sure. Okay. Sure. Unless you guys all want to plunge lower. I think that was one where I didn't know how to answer. Mm -hmm. Explore tick and mosquito control options and educate, educate residents. Um, I mean, I think this is important, but I would, didn't think it was a municipal responsibility. So I'm the L, there are two H's and two M's. So I guess we're somewhere in the M category, but it could be dragged up to an H. M sounds fine to me. Yeah, yep. let's go with the M. Like M. Uh, Northern hardwood forests, basically uh, can ed develop educational materials and conduct outreach to landowners to encourage climate resilient forest stewardship. Uh, my feeling is, is that there are organizations that do this and would do a much better job than the town of Waitley. Uh, me, me too. There's already so much out there. A lot of it coming out of, out of UMass. And uh, okay, uh, I'm convinced. Paul's. Yeah, the Keystone program. Keystone and, program, and uh, I'm sure I was a high, and I'll change it. There, there's hey. a lot of good stuff out there, and that's really readily accessible. All right, we have three highs. So, question is, do you want to drop it to medium, or do you want to drop it to low, <clears throat> or do you want to keep it at high? Low, you said there's that much information out there already. So All right, I'll drop it to a low. I'm okay but with low. Low is fine with me too. Okay. Town's good enough. Not other because I don't to... care about the forest. <clears throat> right, right, but but it's something that's already being done. Yeah, okay. Very well. All right, so this is seek funding to hire a consultant to create an invasive plant management plan, and uh, this is two H's and three M's. But this asterisk is George's comment that forget the consultant, just control the invasives. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, you could assemble a small group who, who would uh, pretty quickly develop a list of uh, the bad spots in town and, uh, and prioritize. That's true. We've got that expertise in town. Yeah. Yeah. The bigger issue is who's going to actually pay for it. I mean, right. Trying to control bittersweet and not weed and garlic mustard and it's like good luck. <laughs> yeah, but but that's a better use for the funding than than hiring a consultant to create an invasive plant management plan and prioritize areas and actions. Yeah, so if we yeah. were to say, except for the consultant part, <laughs> how would you rate the idea that the town should be doing invasive plant control? Hi. Okay. Yeah. Can we put a note on there? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, without the consultant, like without the consultant bird. <laughs> so George is a high. There are three M's. Anybody want to go from an M to an H? I will. I'll go to a high. Yeah. Sure. All right. There we are. The last panel. <clears throat> Cover crops on farms. Work with CISA or extension to identify cover crops that could be used with changing growing seasons to limit dirt blowing off fields and in the winter. Um, <clears throat> this has three highs, a medium, and I was a low on this one. And I'll explain my low vote is that I think that CISA, U, uh, NRCS, and UMass Extension already know what kind of cover crops should be used the question is how do you get people to use them yeah. and so this idea of like researching cover crops for changing seasons they're only ever used for one season so it's not like you're already putting a cover crop and it's got to last for 50 years uh, so it just seemed like it was worded poorly it's more like what kind of incentives can be created for people to use cover crops yep, yep. yeah that's what i was thinking yep. of. Yeah. and that's really the second one the next one down has to do with implementation yep. Oh, yeah. yep 
So did I drag you all down to an L on the first one? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. sure. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and we're all agreed Very on a high. Yep. Huh? Hi. Very persuasive. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I control the mouse and the cursor, so. <laughs> I, I kept reaching for my mouse and trying, Scott. <laughs> All right, geomorphic assessment of Mill River for flooding and alluvial erosion. Uh, we have four H's and one M. Should we just go with the H? Sure. Yep. Sure. All right. Um, the only part that we didn't really do anything about was short, long-term, or ongoing. Do you... I guess it's probably late enough that we should just ignore that and let the rest of the committee figure out how to. I mean, I'm I'm content to just do the prioritization, but yeah, if anybody wants to, yeah, still no. time frame, you can do it and send it to me. No, no. <laughs> this H H is for hungry right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I um, I'm out of things on the agenda. Anybody else have anything? Think of anything. No. So Mr. Herbert is a no show. Yeah. <laughs> what was he going to talk about? I can't remember. The pot farm next to the Whaley Diner. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh right. Yeah. So maybe he got the message. <laughs> yeah, I went by there Monday and there was still standing water in that swale that runs across the field. It's you been will. four weeks since I started watching it and it's still got water in it. And now that the vegetation's coming up, it's sensitive fern, it's reed canary grass, it's cinnamon fern. It's like, yeah, it's all wetland vegetation too. <laughs> well, I, I think that he tried to tell the ZBA or the planning board that that was because the uh, state does not maintain the culvert under uh, state road there. So, so there's no drainage. Yeah. yeah. And I, I went and looked at it. There's plenty of water in the swale. And when it gets down to Route 91, it's dry and the culvert is completely open. Oh. Basically, if, if the water got to it, it would have no problems passing under the highway. Right. And it's not, it's not 91 stormwater coming down. And there's no obstruction to it draining across to, uh, to the swimming hole. Uh, so it's just... It's what everybody says. Oh, it's a highway. It wouldn't be this wet if it weren't for the highway. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yes. so I guess we'll eventually probably get him in front of us and we'll have to deal with him then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any, anything else? Not for me. No, All right. not for me. Well, thank you for hanging in there for this prioritization thing. I think it's always good for town boards to put forward what they think are the priorities for the town when we have opportunities. And uh, thanks for coming out. Oh, and on the fee, on the fee discussion where I vol volunteered to uh, oh, represent yeah. the Conservation Commission, we're still waiting for the Ag Commission to appoint their representative. <laughs> so, Brian sent out a, uh, a reminder, but. Uh, well, I think once the season is over sometime in the winter, they'll probably get around to that. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you must be really frustrated, George. I mean, you were rare to go on that one. Terrible, yeah. <laughs> I read the I read the bylaw, and it's just it's two sentences, so it, it's very vague. Yeah. Well, nobody wanted to make a decision, so they called for yeah. a committee to do right. it. <laughs> Throw it to committee. We don't want to deal with it. All right. Okay. Um, I will suggest uh, Thursday. June 3rd for the site inspection for the bridges, and I'll let you know how that goes. Okay. Um, oh, the one other thing is, it's sort of interesting that the MVP planning process is happening at the same time that the open space and recreation plan is being developed. So I just received today uh, the action items for the open space and recreation plan where they're seeking conservation commission feedback I think they might even want it by the end of the week or something. So I'm going to send it to you tonight. If you get a chance to look at it, feel free to send me your comments about the various action items that are on there. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Good night. Good night. See you all Good night. soon.